Hello everyone, my name is Holly Mackay, I'm Managing Director of the Platforum. I'm joined today by Aegon's Lou Macari. Hi Lou, Hi, who Lou. is Platform Distribution Director. Lou, we've been talking today about the challenges that advisors face and how platforms can help them overcome those challenges. You're out and about with advisors all the time. What are you hearing on the ground? Yeah, I mean, the conversation the last few years, as you know, Holly, has been about platforms, it's been about RDR, but I think fundamentally it's been about how can we deliver a, a better proposition to our customers, a, a, a price they're willing and able to pay, and at a price that we can make margin and make, a, and make a profit on, and how can we build sustainable business models going forward. Okay. How then do you think platforms, I mean, we've heard a lot in the past about let's not beat around the bush about life company platforms coming out and saying to advisors, you've got to use a platform, it'll help drive profitability. Can we talk about some actual examples? Because we, we've been talking amongst ourselves today about some case studies or advisor firms that you're talking to where you think that some of the newer platform developments can help them service clients a different way. Yeah, absolutely. So if you take a, a typical advisor model, perhaps a, a 10 RI model that, that, that's, that's maybe acquired client banks over the years and, and sitting there with 10,000 clients, when you when you start to analyse how they can build a profitable face-to-face -face model, uh, we have to look at uh, the capacity of the business to do that and a face-to-face -face model is limited by the number of times an advisor can sit down and see a client. So typically in that scenario they'd be looking at between 100 and 120 clients per advisor. That then leaves a chunk of eight to 9,000 clients that they can't hope to see your service going forward. I think what platforms do are, are, are two things. They, they, they offer the opportunity to, to service that face-to-face -face client bank more, uh, more, more, pro more, more, more productively However, it also offers an opportunity to look at a different, more creative way to service the 9,000. I think uh, if I can make comment on the, the art platform, that the Aegon platform we've just developed, mm. that, that offers advisors the opportunity to offer a self-service um, transactional relationship uh, for, the, for the client bank to use without okay. having to see them. Okay. We, we talk to advisors about that and I guess the feedback I get and from a lot of them is why, why would we go into that and, and what actually are the, the kind of compliance risks of, of dealing with this self-directed customer yeah. base, especially in the, some comments I've had if that's on the same platform. So there's a sense yes. that you've either got to quarantine it yeah. or, or not do it. Oh, well, well, I understand that and, I, and I've had these discussions directly with, 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 with customers even this week. A number of things, obviously when, when you do self-serve it comes with lots of disclaimers and the client's, uh, client's given every, every, every opportunity to, to not do that or phone the advisor. But let's not forget they can do that now. There's nothing to stop anyone self-serving right now. There's lots of firms doing this. You can Google. I can think of several firms where I can go on the internet right now and buy an ISA, buy a stocks and shares ISA, or buy it or trade equities without using an advisor. So I think we've got to wake up to the fact this is happening. We can either be part of that or, 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 or we can lose the opportunity. Okay. But why would advisors bother? I mean, putting it bluntly, how do they make money out of that? Well, there's a margin for the advisor. Uh, and they're still maintaining a relationship with their customers. The margin in, or, or, or just in the self sales dollars, not a huge margin, but it's enough to, uh, if you get enough volume, it's enough to sustain a, a good income stream. Plus, you're still maintaining a relationship with those customers. Uh, 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 and as and when you want some advice, that could be transactional advice, maybe through an event or through some inheritance or, 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 or through some. Um, so at, at retirement, for example, it doesn't mean I have to have a relationship and see you every year for mm. the next 20 years. That, that, that may not be how I want to, to, to transact with you. And I think we cannot assume our customers always want to see us. And I've been challenging that with advisors for the last 20 years. We shouldn't presume that just because we've built a proposition around face to face, that's exactly the way our customers uh, want to transact with us. And why not offer them a choice? And why not offer them a blend? Okay. And so Aegon's doing this as well in, in the, the workplace market. Is that where a lot of the thinkings come from? Because in the corporate market, Obviously, advisors have had to think about how they, they deliver an advice model that isn't all about face-to-face -face advice. Holly, when I came to Aegon, having worked with, in the corporate market for many years as a consultant, I, I was excited by that opportunity because one, one of the issues you have in the corporate market is how do you uh, service an, a large employee client base profitably? And you can't do it face-to-face. -face. You can try a bit of seminars. It's still, how do you service that client base profitably? Once again, 
uh, using technology, and people are used, as I said earlier, people use the you know, internet's here, it works, and, and it's, like, it's here to stay, so it works, of course it works. It's here to stay, <laughs> well, it depends. I hope it works. I, I, depends what I, you're providing. I've got use. online banking as well, so I hope it works. Of course it works, but I think we're comfortable transacting online, we're comfortable using the internet, we're com comfortable using online solutions. So in the corporate in the corporate market, this, this, this allows us to square that, to, that square that circle, how can I service that client bank profitably? And at retirement, you can accumulate through your uh, through your workplace savings. And at retirement, it gives you flexible options. And uh, I think that I think the flexible options on retirement is actually part of the sale of why I should save. I mean, in a sense, Holly, the government's just become our biggest introducer. What about Nest? Well, Nest, Nest, Nest is there uh, is there as well. And we, we're going to work with Nest to make sure that the right clients get the right solution. I think uh, for, for 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 clients, perhaps. And Nest will be the right solution, but I think for many, many more, they'll still need mm -hmm. advice at some point through their life. And I think what advisors have in that scenario is they have that existing relationship, and they have that they can leverage the relationship the employee has with their employer. And I think that's that that's the opportunity, as I keep saying, the opportunity for the corporate advisors to realize that opportunity, working with the employers, working through with the employers to the employees, and making them realize the importance of saving, saving for the retirement. Because you know, the, it's obvious that um, uh, the government are looking to the financial services industry to support that objective, as they do in other countries. And then, in this scenario, just to sort of close off, Lou, I mean, a Aegon are interesting to me because they're the first group that have built a, a platform that actually does say we'll service people in the, the kind of D to C environment, we'll service people um, who are clients of advisors, we'll service people in the workplace. If you had to be a betting man and sort of look forward mm -hmm. three or four years and think where you believe the majority of flows will come from, do you think it will be mostly from the workplace? Do you think it will be mostly from from IFAs on that face-to-face -face sort of advice journey with the client? Or do you think it will be from this hybrid where the, the advisor introduces the clients into a, a self-serve environment? Well, I'm going to hedge my bets, Holly, and say yeah. it's, going to be all, it's going to be all three. And I think it's about, fundamentally, it's about delivering the right solution for the right customer. So obviously, if, if, if for some individuals, they will continue to want face-to-face -face advice because they've got complex financial affairs or they're prepared to pay for a service for their advisors. And that's absolutely fine. And then that, that's the face-to-face -face model. I think I think we, we I think most advisors would agree it's difficult to sell to serve um, clients on a mass basis through a face-to-face -face model. I think most clients, most advisors accept that. So I think we have to get a bit more creative around those solutions. And I, I, I believe if the financial service industry doesn't do that for themselves, somebody else will find a way to do that because there's a huge opportunity yeah. there. Yeah. And the blend in between, I think, while challenging, I, I, I think, well, why not? Why can't customers choose to transact as the way they were? And I think right now, uh, advisors within the financial services have the opportunity because we have the expertise, we have the knowledge, we have the understanding. I think we've just got to find a better way, a more creative way to deliver that to more people. Okay. Well, the challenge is on the table. Perhaps you can come back and, and talk to me in 12 months and we'll, we'll see how the the kind of the, the pot of the money is flowing and, and what the Aegon proposition is well, looking like. Well, I can say in 12 months I'm reaching that retirement age. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I become a customer all of a sudden. And there's the old saying, you can't sell anything you wouldn't, you wouldn't buy yourself. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign up and I'll be, on, I'll be on ARC and I'll be using those flexible drawdown solutions. So, yeah. Good on you. Okay, <laughs> thanks for coming to talk to me. Thanks, Lou Macari. Thank you.